Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last part, we finished UV unwrapping our gas pump, and now it's time to lay out the UVs so that we can texture them in programs such as Substance Painter and painting programs such as Photoshop. So yeah, let's jump right in and check it out. All right, let's start. The first thing I wanna do is, um, I have these fuel gauge objects in the front of our gas pump. I'm actually gonna make it one object. It will also make it easier to select later on in the um, UV editor. I'm going to click the combine button and there we go. Um, the next thing I want to do is switch to my UV editing workspace. So go to your workspaces and down here we have UV editing, select that one. And then um, what I want to do next is it's a little bit hard to see my UV borders and it's because um, I have a customized layout, so what I'm or a customized editor. So what I'm going to do is um, adjust some of those settings. And if you have that, you can adjust your settings as well. Um, I'm going to go up to the View tab. Down here we have Grid Options. And what I'm going to do is just lighten this blue color. There we go. Looks a little nicer. And then what I can do also is um, for the grid number of color value, just going to increase that a little bit so I can see it now. And for the tile lines, I'm going to increase that value as well. There we go. Just going to close that up. And now let's uh, go into object mode, select everything. And here are our shells. And what we'll want to do is press A on the keyboard to frame everything so we can see all our shells. And I'm going to perform a layout of these shells and kind of take you through my steps, sort of my checklist of things I go through to make sure that the UV layout is as good as it can be. And um, what I'm going to do first, though, is uh, these UV shells here. I'm holding down the right mouse button, by the way. These UV shells are um, these ones in the front. And they're facing in the direction I want. So I don't want them to accidentally rotate or get dislodged. So I'm going to move them up here and separate them from the group. Just scaling them down a bit as well. And then what I'm going to do is um, select the rest of the shells. So let's grab these shells. Hold down shift, select these ones, and now let's perform a layout. So I'm gonna go to the modify tab, and over here we have a layout. Open up that option box. I'm just gonna reset this. And what I'm going to do is give it um, the ability to rotate. There we go. And down here, um, for the shell padding, I'm gonna make four, and tile padding, I'll make four as well. So shell padding is, um, the space between the shells and the tile padding is the space to the borders. I'm going to click layout and there we go. Maya has laid these out for us. Awesome. Now let's go through my checklist of things. So um, the first one was wireframe. The second one is shaded mode. Turn that on. And in this mode, what we're looking for is um, whether the shells are flipped or not or whether they're overlapping. So when they're overlapping, you'll see that um, the color is a little bit different. And when they're flipped, they'll be red. So I'm going to flip one of these shells to show you. I'm going to select this one, go to Modify, and Flip. And then you can see that it's red. So what you'll want to do is go through your shells and inspect them to make sure that they're not um, accidentally flipped. Right? I'm just going to select this one and flip it back. And now let's go to the third one, which is UV Distortion. So UV Distortion will show up as red or blue. Um, right now, it's looking pretty good on our gas um, pump. Down here, though, we have a bit of red. So when we uv unwrap this um, fuel nozzle, we added a seam back here, and it unwrapped, but there's a bit of tension in the back, and this is just showing us that. So down here, if I were to select this shell, down here, we have this shell, and we can relieve some of that tension if we want to, or we can say, you know, this is good enough and leave it, right? But for, I just want to show you how you can relieve some of this tension. So I'm going to turn off um, distortion mode for a second. I'm also going to turn back to wireframe. And what I'm going to do is go into edge mode, double click this edge, hold down shift, double click this one, and I want to cut that again. So I'm going to hold down shift, right mouse button, and cut. Let's go into UV shell mode, grab these shells, and what I want to do is unfold these again, right? So we have an unfold option over here. And now let's just move these shells down, maybe here somewhere. And I'm also gonna do a stack and orient and an unstack, just so I can see them side by side. Now let's turn back on UV distortion. And just like that, you can see that 
um, all that tension, most of that tension has been relieved for us. So, right? We can add more cuts and relieve it more, but I think that's fine. I think it was fine before as well, but now it's a lot better. All right, now let's um, turn off UV, UV distortion and we're gonna turn on the checkerboard. So um, the checkerboard, what this allows us to do is see one, um, the rotation of our UVs right up here. You can see it's a little bit rotated. We'll fix that in a second. And then we can also see the size of the checkerboard. So um, it tells us kind of the texel density and the relationship of some of the objects. So one of the things is um, you don't necessarily have to have all your objects with the same texel density, right? So for example, right, um, the gas pump cabinet, I do want that to share the same relationship. I want these squares to be roughly the same size and maybe facing the same direction. But the fuel gauge objects here, maybe I want that to have more resolution. Maybe I want uh, the player to be able to get close in there and see numbers without seeing like low res, right? So that's something to keep in mind. And maybe the fuel nozzle, right? Maybe I don't need that to have the same um, texel density as the cabinet, just, just a, as an example, right? So yeah, so this, those, are, those are some things to keep in mind. Um, let's rotate this one though. Um, I'm gonna select this shell, move it in front of maybe here, and I'm gonna hold down, um, sorry, I'm gonna go into rotation mode. So I'm pressing E on the keyboard. I'm gonna hold down J and try and snap this back, right? And you can see that it's kind of lost that straight rotation right? Probably when we unfolded it, probably the same for this one as well, right? So what we can do with these shells is, um, I'm just going to turn off uh, checkerboard for a second. Let's select both these shells. We'll go into face mode, right? Select these faces. And what I, we can do is do another projection. So I'm going to do a planar projection again. Um, so over here, and I'm going to do it in the Z axis and hit apply. And there you go. And now let's just close this up, turn on the checkerboard again, and you can see now it's straight, right? Awesome. So that's perfect. We'll move this off to the side, and I can turn off the checkerboard. Um, but however, when I did the projection, now this is huge, right? So when Maya lays these shells out, I'm just going to show you guys. Um, I'm going to close this up as well. So when it lays out these shells, it tries to make them the same texel density, right? Um, however, how would we get this to be back to the same as this, right? So it's pretty easy. If I were to go in here, open up the transform tab, down here we can get its texel density, which is 31 point something, right? Um, and then we can select these shells, right, if we're in UV shell mode, and we can set it to it, right? Because right now if I select this one and get it, it's a 228, right? So let's get this texel density. Um, by the way, it doesn't make it exactly. So if I were to get this texel density, it's through 31.5. If I were to get this one, it's a little bit different, but it's very close, right? So now let's select these shells, right? There's two here. And we can uh, select these and set it. So now they're sharing the same texel density, right? But um, you can see there's another issue. It's that we have a lot of wasted space here, right? And the reason for that is um, we have some shells that are really big. So um, this portion here, this shell, it's going all the way around and it's going from end to end. So because it's trying to make that the same texel density, we can't take full advantage of this space. So let's cut this shell, cut a couple of the other shells as well, the longer ones, and try and maximize this space a bit more. So let's go into edge mode. I'm going to select this edge, hold down shift, double click this one so that I have those edges. And in this window, I'm gonna hold down shift, right mouse button and cut, right? And down here, I'm gonna cut the shell as well. This one that runs all the way around and I'm gonna hold down shift, right mouse button and oops, cut, there we go. And now what we can do is try and perform another layout. So this time though, I'm gonna go into object mode and I only wanna lay out the objects that um, I want maybe to take um, as much space as possible here. So I'm going to choose the gas pump and I want to choose also this object down here. I want these ones to have the same relationship and the same texel density. The other ones I may or may not, right? But let's start with these ones. And then what we want to do now is lay these out. So let's go to modify um, layout. 
And there you go, you can see now it's really starting to take up this space more, right? So that's awesome. What I can do if I want is I can grab these shells, maybe move them out, maybe grab these ones and move them out. And we can try another layout just with these ones, right? And I'm gonna go to modify and layout. And then I can assess and figure out if the remaining space for the objects um, is enough, right? And I think it will be. So probably for the rest of, um, or the next part of the tutorial, I'll be just um, resizing these shells and putting them in here. Um, and so at the end of it, so I'll speed that part up. At, at the end, I'll show you guys also how to export the UV. Um, if you want to use it for program painting programs such as Photoshop. So stick around for that. But for now, I'll just start um, laying in these shells. So um, doing the UV layout. All right, so the UVs are laid out. I just did a quick check with the shade mode. Um, I actually had this shell flip, so I flipped it back, probably when I did the projection. And then um, now we're it's all ready to go. What I wanna show you guys next is how to export this UV. So uh, let's go to the image tab. Uh, make sure your object selected, Ashley. So we'll go into object mode, select everything so that all your shells are here. And always press A to make sure you frame it and make sure there's no shells that are, you know, hidden somewhere. Now what we want to do is go to the image tab, go down to UV snapshot. And over here, you'll navigate to where you want to save your uh, UV. Click the browse button. If you set up Maya project folder, it'll put it in the images folder. And now we just need to name it. I'm going to call it uh, gas pump UV and click save. And then that doesn't actually save it. What we need to do next is first um, 
choose your image format that you want. Usually I go with PNG and then you can change your ed edge color. And then down here, um, you can click apply and close and that'll close the window. Also, you can set your resolution and just click, click apply and close. And now if you look in your images folder or wherever you save it, you'll have your UV uh, snapshot there. Here it is here. And yeah, that's all there is to that. I'm just going to uh, move this window back. And now I'm going to go back to our regular workspace. Let's save our scene. Go up to File and Increment and Save. So now our UVs are laid out and uh, we're ready to move on to the next part. So see everyone then.